David, how's the week been after a really good win down in Hobart? Yeah, last pretty, Saturday? pretty stable, Oliver. I mean, I think, um, you know, it's one thing we've worked really hard on is having that level of consistency right across the board. Um, you know, win, lose or draw. Um, we just have to, you know, continue to look at the areas that we're surging ahead with to improve. Um, but yeah, look, from the player's perspective, mate, there's always a, a bit of extra bounce in their step. And your second game against the Dogs this season, um, yeah, really tough encounter last time around. How do you go mm. about tackling the Dogs this time? Yeah, well, look, I mean, we had a, a lot of learnings out of that, that first game. You know, level of intensity, um, you know, what you need to bring on a regular basis. You know, there were some, some good learnings for us coming out of there. Um, you know, a tough opponent, aren't they? You know, they're, they're building a really strong profile. Uh, their brand's great. You know, defensively, they're really strong. Stoppages, they're really strong. You know, their front half pressures, um, you know, really strong. So, yeah, we, we believe that we've, you know, made some steps forward since the last time we played them in some of the areas that, you know, we're connecting, I reckon, as a group better, um, you know, our offence and, and defence. So, look, we're looking forward to the challenge of, you know, taking on another top team. Um, you know, you, you're always learning every week, but I think when you play the best, um, you know, you get some really good insights as to what the, the really top teams are doing. So, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Jared Pollock back in the uh, extended squad. He hasn't played, I think, since round three. Mm. Um, how have you seen his recovery? Yeah, well, look, we've just been patient, you know, with Polly. Um, you know, last year he had a few soft tissues as well and, um, and this year. So we just need to be, we've, we've been patient with him. Um, so it was great to see him run around last week. Uh, we'll finalise the team in the next sort of 24 hours. But yeah, certainly he's back in the mix, which is which is great. Um, you kicked uh, nine goals and 18 behinds last week. What have you guys done during the week in training to make the, mo to make the most of your scoring opportunities this week against the Dogs? Yeah, same as what we normally do, Ellie. We always, we always have a goal kicking, you know, program. Uh, some of it's a little bit different from week to week. Some it's a bit more on the run. Some's a bit more is set shot. We've had an extra couple of sessions being an eight day break this week. So that's been good. We've been able to have a, a couple of goes at that. A little bit in our main training session yesterday and a little bit of what we call craft work on Tuesday. So yeah, I think you're right. There's was probably a handful of goals that you know you would expect um, the guys that had those set shots that would normally um, put them through. So they've gone back with Heath, they would have assessed their routines. Um, but yeah, hopefully they can step up this week when they get their chances and put them through the big sticks. And the game against the Dogs this weekend, will it be used as kind of like a benchmark to measure your growth from across the season? Um, yeah, it's, it's, look, that's probably one way um, to look at it. Um, but as, as we've said all the way along, like we, we're in each week to win. Um, it's not just a matter of saying, oh, well, look, regardless of the result, we're just going to grow. Um, I think that's a given. Um, but look, a as we said before, we're in, we're in better shape this time around. Uh, I think since the bye, you know, our form line's been really consistent. I think our fans um, can see that. And I think they can actually see the, the growth from what we're trying to do. I think, as I said, the connection is, is better. Um, some areas that we need to be alert to, as we said, you know, the, the doggies are a high pressure team, you know, they move the ball quick, um, their defence is, is terrific. So we'll have our work cut out scoring against them. But yeah, we, we reckon we're up for the challenge. David, it's Roy from The Age here, mate. Um, just keen for your views on, on Cameron Zerha. Um, he goes in so hard so often and really sort of can you know, change the energy of a game up with his with his aggression. Mm. Do you ever tell him to slow down or protect his body a little more? Because Jizzy goes in. Yeah, a lot, Roy. If, um, he's and look, and he's improved in that area. Um, our guys love playing with him up in that forward end. Um, as you said, I think you're spot on. The the energy, the enthusiasm um, that he can bring into that forward line um, is infectious. Um, in that area. We know that, you know, when you get the ball in your front half, you're looking for that forward half pressure. Um, and, and look, Cam's continuing to work at the areas that, um, you know, he needs to improve in as a, as a forward. Um, you know, interestingly enough, you know, the little article about the doggy belt he's bought, 
um, we quite often, you know, reflect on how that sort of helped him, you know, mellow a little bit, you know, off the field. So hopefully, um, you know, we, we could get that um, a little bit more in his game. But I don't want him to lose his energy and his intensity. Um, you know, that that's that's a pretty key trait, you know, for any, any forward line. It's pretty important for us. And on Robbie Tarrant, he's someone at, at that sort of age bracket and experience level, a lot of teams would look at and say, geez, he'd make us better. Um, how can you to have him with you as you sort of move this team towards, you know, rising up the ladder again? Yeah, well, I couldn't see Robbie playing for another club, let's be honest. It's, it's that simple? It's just, you just could not see him anywhere else? Not for me. I, I don't envisage him going anywhere. I, certainly no indication from my side of things. Um, and from a club's perspective, yeah, I, I would be, I'd be very surprised if that was, you know, was even a consideration. There, there may be some talk um, publicly, not that I've taken much note of it, but yeah, we've enjoyed Robbie being back. He's a key part of our leadership group. Um, as you said, he's got a wealth of experience to help um, Ben out down there, um, Josh out down there. He adds a variation since he's been back in the team. It's allowed us to play Jack in a slightly different role. So, yeah, yeah, been, it's been great being able to coach him back in the team in the last few weeks. Davis, you able to give us an update on Tommy Powell? Yeah, so just an update on, on Powley. So we rested him uh, last week and we've been able to do a little bit more uh, research in regards to um, you know some of his ongoing soreness. So we'll probably just continue to manage him going forward. I think if we could, you know, if we wanted to, we could probably push on with him, but uh, there's probably no need at, at this point in time. So we'll just take the next two or three weeks just to see how things settle down for him and maybe he's back in the team in, you know, in a month's time. David, on, on Powell, how difficult is it to sort of manage a young guy? Because the old school of thought would have been you make him play through his soreness so he knows how to handle it, that sort of mentality. But it seems like there's something serious guys are looking at there. Uh, no, I, I think he's pushed pretty hard, Roy. Um, you know, they're, all those young guys are just keen to play. Um, so what, what we need to understand is that those guys come through and only play uh, sorry, do a pre-season at about 60%, 65%. So their preparation period um, to play a full season, you know, is sort of automatically compromised. So you need to manage them carefully because you don't want long-term issues with them. So we could probably push him on, um, but then at the end of the year, he might need, you know, two or three months worth uh, of rest um, and recuperation. So that probably doesn't make sense in regards to the level that he's played at um, you know, he's, he's obviously been pretty close to a rising star. Um, his form's been great. Um, and then when that starts to just fall off a little bit, um, then you need to ask the appropriate questions and um, manage him accordingly. So, but we, look, we've been wrapped with, with where Powell is, um, he's got to, the level that he's been able to contribute in the midfield, his decision making's elite. Um, so we, we've been really wrapped with him and I guess it's just a no risk policy for us with him. It was a big day for the club in terms of membership. Huge day, massive day. Um, to all our kangaroo members out there, you know, a, a massive thank you. Um, you know, to reach our biggest ever membership, over 45,000. Um, you know, as we, we sit here today, it's 45,133 members. So um, a massive thanks from not only the club, but from the players um, and the recognition that you guys have st stuck with us, you know, through difficulty and adversity last year, and to then break a, a membership record this year has just been an amazing feat. So, you know, from the bottom of our hearts, we, we thank you with all our sincerity, and um, look forward to getting you back to Marvel in the next couple of weeks and, and hearing those Kangaroo fans cheer loudly. How pleasing is that to get such a high membership number when you are going through, yeah, a rebuilding period with a young group? I look. I, Oliver, I, I put it like this, the, the, the sign off of our fans to understand what we're doing um, is just incredible. You know, they're seeing what we want to do. Um, they want to become part of that journey. We want them to, to cheer for the Phillips and the Powers and the Lazaros as hard as they have with the, the Terrence and the Goldsteins and the Cunningtons, you know, and the Zeebel. So, 
to have them on that start of that journey with us where we're going uh, has been phenomenal. So, you know, we, we can't thank them enough um, for their understanding and their commitment to, um, to the direction that we're taking.